Recording in progress. The floor is yours, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Liming. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance for my raspy voice. We have two toddlers at home, and the, the daycare colds have been uh, have been rough this year. Um, so, with that, uh, I would like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of December fifteenth, twenty twenty-two. Mr. Liming, would you please take a roll call? Certainly. Would the representative from the Public Works Department please state his or her name? Yasha Franklin Hodge. Property Management Department. Joseph Callahan. Transportation Department. Amy Cording. Inspectional Services Department. Uh, Brian Ronan. Water and Sewer Commission. Denise Devlin. And Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Sarah Leon. Very good. We have quorum. Thank you very much. Um, on to our first item, uh, hearing minutes, uh, HM1. At the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on December 1st, 2022. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to uh, accept the minutes of December 1st, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Uh, on to our next item, utility pole hearing number one on a petition by Eversource Energy for utility pole installation within American Region Highway Public Way, West Broad Street to install two new private utility poles to be located generally west of Morton Street. Uh, would the presenters please introduce themselves, their affiliations, and provide an overview of the project, and then we'll open it up to the commissioners for questions and observations. Hey, this is Chanel Graf from Eversource. Can you hear me? Yes. You can. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Yes, we are installing um, two new poles. Um, the customer is MWRA and was servicing a monitoring cabinet, which was formerly operated by the Boston Street Lighting. I don't, I don't um, are we able to pull up plans? Uh, I don't know if the um, uh, if the, the presenter could share them, or Todd, if you're able to, if uh, if he's not. Do you have those available, Chanel? No, I am not prepared to share the um, the plans, but I can. Um, like I have them in front of me. See. I've got you. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So we have um, we're at the intersection of uh, um, American Legion Highway and um, and if you look at the bottom, that opening right there is coming in from Morton Street, and then we have. Um, we're installing the new pole right there, the Eversource pole 2304 over 38-1X, solely Eversource pole. And then um, on the other side, we're just installing the other pole on the other side. And the monitoring cabinet is on Morton Street. And that's that's all we're doing. Commissioners, uh, any questions? Todd, do you want to uh, ask? Should I ask? Uh, yeah, no. Chanel, are there any uh, overhead wires going in uh, associated with these poles? Specifically, any crossing American Legion Highway here? Yes, we have. Um, on the diagram, we have 140 feet of wire right there going across American Legion Highway to the pole 2304 38-1X. Chanel, this is Paraja, Senior City Engineer. Chanel, are you aware that American Legion Highway is an underground district? 
for the full limits of this roadway from Blue Hill Ave all the way to uh, Hyde Park Ave and that you are, when I say you, no utility companies are allowed to cross American Legion Highway. That was the whole purpose of the reconstruction of American Legion Highway and upgrading Eversource's uh, power systems. Oh, okay. Um, no, I was not aware of that. I'm just going by what's on our engineering plan and um, I'll have to refer back to them. Yes, you, you have to because the Within the city, there are corridors and areas, for sale areas that are underground corridors, meaning we don't have above ground wires crossing the corridor. Even though some of the liberties have been taken on American Legion Highway at Walk Hill. At Walk Hill, okay. Okay, so, and if you go at American Legion Highway at the five legged intersection of Canterbury, uh, Todd, uh, film, you know, the Canterbury Cummings, Means American Legion way. Highway. If you notice, all the above overhead wires were undergrounded when we rebuilt the American Legion Highway. So this will be completely the antithesis of creating view corridors with, without wires. So you need to, uh, first of all, help us by informing your engineering team okay. at the American Legion Highway again from Blue Hill Air all the way to High Park Air. That's an underground corridor. All that landscaping we did, we spent millions of dollars creating a uh, creating a corridor that doesn't have wires crossing. Okay. okay. So you need to take this back to your home base. Okay, I'll take it back to the engineering department and let them know um, this is only um, from um, Blue Hill Avenue to Hyde Park Gap. Yep. No overhead service. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> If I can ask as well, if there is a utility uh, pole that is being proposed in an alternate location or a different wiring scheme still after you've done that review, um, at least in the proposed location, uh, it sits in the middle of the canopy of two large mature trees. And so we'd be interested in understanding what impacts, if any, um, the utility pole uh, proposed would have on uh, the trees uh, in the immediate vicinity. So. Um, please, please, uh, if you come back with a revised full installation, please provide that information as well. Okay, the impact on the trees um, <clears throat> in the location where they're installing the poles. Okay. Yep. Okay, impact of um, the trees. Okay. Todd, should we treat this as a, should we do a motion to continue? What, what's your recommendation for how we? Um, so I just reached out to um, Kellyanne with Eversource. Um, I, I think. These poles in and of themselves, I think, are fine, uh, provided that the connections being made across American Legion Highway are being done underground. Um, and then the lines would be able to come up the, the riser on this pole uh, and proceed across. Um, I certainly don't know if that's the intention or the case. I don't know if Chanel does. Um, I'm not sure. Todd, if I may jump in uh, over the years, uh since we don't have the resource matrix to ensure that once we allow the poles to be installed, that the wires don't get connected, uh, it's a slippery slope. So my recommendation is for them to, uh, they can withdraw this without prejudice and come back once they have an understanding as to how they are going to cross the American Legion Highway. Because uh, this location, uh, there are many reasons why we may not want to trench through this area. But let them think it through. That them are my thoughts. Sure. The only other question I would ask is: I, I see Colleen with MWRA is here on the on the call. Um, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Colleen. You may have no additional information, but if you'd like to weigh in, please uh, feel free. Yes. Thank you, Todd. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, a couple questions. Um, when we received notice, uh, I checked in with our permitting department and they didn't have any record for an application for an 8M permit for this project. So that was my um, initial concern. And if, there, if we're talking about um, an underground um, location, um, do we have a plan with the easements in the area? With 
with the easements? Oh, I'll, I'll have to, I would have to get back to you on that regarding the easement for that area. Okay, in, in, in relation to um, the underground utilities that MWRA has in the area, aside from the, um, the property that we own in fee, um, the subsurface utilities, I would be concerned with, but um, more concerning would be that an 8M permit um, was applied for, and I, I don't have record of that right now with our permitting department. So if I may weigh in, it sounds like there are a few things that need to get rectified with this one. I think it probably makes sense to withdraw this and try again in the new year after these questions have been answered. It also sounds like MWRA isn't necessarily um, pressed for time to get service to this cabinet. So um, that sounds like it's probably not a, not a big issue. Okay, yes, I'll get back to everyone and um, give them an update on what you mentioned in this meeting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Todd, what is, do we need to do any formal process to uh, withdraw this? Um, Chanel just needs to request the withdrawal and we just need to accept it. Okay, request it now or by letter or by email? Nope, just right now. Okay, I request the withdrawal of this permit and we'll get back to I'll get to engineering department and follow up on the easement and um you she mentioned the AM permit okay I will draw I was last will withdraw from this permit but we'll go down You are mute. Uh, yeah, there we go. Todd, do we need a formal commission action to accept the withdrawal? Uh, it doesn't hurt. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve the withdrawal of utility poll hearing number one? I'll make a motion to withdraw utility poll hearing number one without prejudice. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. All right, on to our uh, public hearings, and we'll start with public hearing number one on a petition by Roxbury Preparatory Charter School for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Proctor Street Public Way, Roxbury, located on its northwesterly side at address number 69, generally northeast of Norfolk Avenue. This was new business on December 1st. It is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan, 69 Proctor Street, Roxbury District, one sheet, dated November 30th, 2022. Would the presenters please introduce themselves, their affiliations, provide a brief uh, review of the project and any changes since your last hearing. Good morning, Chelsea Christensen, Niche Engineering, I'm the civil engineer for the project on behalf of Roxbury Prep Charter School. Uh, just a quick overview of the location. This is our site here with Proctor Street along the south edge and Magazine along the north and Norfolk Ave, between Norfolk Ave and Massachusetts Ave. This is an image of the existing site right here. These existing buildings will all be demolished. And this is an image of the proposed building from Proctor Street looking towards Norfolk. Another one from the park, this is Clifford Play Playground, um, looking back along Proctor Street towards Mass Ave. This is the proposed view from Magazine Street um, with the, 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 the garage going underneath the building overhang here. With that, I will move to the pedestrian easement being requested. The um, proposed easement is along Proctor Street in order to widen the existing sidewalk onto the private property. The easement itself is about four feet wide and uh, a little over 1,100 square feet. Uh, 
Are there any questions or comments from members of the commission? Chelsea, just for the record, the person you are representing at the Roxbury Prep Charter School is? Um, so uh, we have a few members of our team here. I have um, Bob Baldwin from Curo, who is the owner's project manager, and Matt Rice from SS SMMA, who is the architect, along with other team members if other questions arise. Not obviously we yeah. have the necessary permissions or the proper petition signed by someone since we are taking land from a property owner. Yes, yes, we have the appropriate signatures on the petitions and we'll get the appropriate signatures on the grant of easement documents as well. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, I see staff or members of the public. No, I will remind the public if you wish to add testimony or ask questions, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Um, I see none at this time, uh, and we're all set. All right, do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number one? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Roxbury Preparatory Charter School for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Proctor Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. On to <clears throat> public hearing number two on a petition by Roxbury Preparatory Charter School for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lighting infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, street trees, landscaping, green stormwater infrastructure, bike racks, driveway curb cuts, and a raised crosswalk. Proctor Street at address number 69, generally northeast of Norfolk Avenue, Magazine Street, northeast of Kemble Street. This was new business on 12-1, uh, and as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, Proctor Street, Magazine Street, 69 Proctor Street, Roxbury, four sheets dated November 2022. Would the proponents please reintroduce themselves and provide an update on any changes to the last year? Chelsea Christensen, Niche Engineering, Civil Engineer, on behalf of uh, Roxbury Charter School, along with Bob Baldwin from Q Row and Matt Rice from SMMA. The specific repairs proposed along Proctor Street include a minimum of um, nine foot wide concrete walkway. The pedestrian easement we just discussed is shown here in this red hatch. The um, there is a four-foot furnishing zone along the north edge of Proctor Street, including some plantings and trees um, that will include some green infrastructure involved in them. Um, there's also porous pavers with bike racks along the east edge. And there's a raised crossing across to where the buses will drop off and access to the park itself and additional bike racks and porous pavers along this side of Proctor Street and an extension on the east edge for a uh, bike share station to be installed by others. The changes from the new business hearing are reconfiguration of some of the tree and bike locations, um, the addition of this curb extension and some regrading of the sidewalk in um, the most easterly area over here. Um, would you like me to move on to Magazine Street or to have questions yeah, on the first? Yeah, you can keep going. Okay. Improvements along Magazine Street include a six-foot concrete walkway. Planting area is located um, along in, inside the private property. Um, at the back of the sidewalk based on discussions with uh, various city agencies. We're relocating one street light from the south side of Magazine Street to the north, which has been coordinated with the street lighting division, and relocating the existing curb cut from this location here a little farther west to here. Is 
So if there are any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Commissioners, any uh, questions or comments? No, we stuck Chelsea through the ringer on this one. Um, she met with all of us, I think, collectively, uh, me, Sarah, right, the rest of BTD, Kate, um, BPDA. So we, I think we got her uh, in, in, in every direction. Excellent. Um, thank you for uh, working with uh, yes, thank the team, you. Chelsea. <laughs> um, any other comments or questions? Chelsea, just a point of clarification. On the Proctor Street, the, the curb lines are moving. Can you tell me the net roadway width where the new crosswalk is? Yeah, because I don't see the, the roadway width uh, dimension. What yes, I can add that in. It's um, a little under 16 feet. Todd, is the fire department okay with that? Yeah, so we've had a number of discussions about this, um, and we recognize that this is less than the 20 feet that the fire department typically likes to see. Uh, these plans have been sent to the fire department. If we hear any concerns from them, we'll be sure to address them um, and make the modifications as appropriate. To be clear, I do think that this is a condition that you would find in our like neighborhood slow street zones, et cetera. Yeah, Chelsea, just for uh, consistency, uh, when you're narrowing an uh, asset of this nature, do show it so that way the person who is reviewing it, you don't need to sort of spell it out, it is shown. Will do. Thank you. The uh, additional comments or questions from the commission? Yeah, I see staff or members of the public. No, all set. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number two? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Roxbury Preparatory Charter School for the making of specific repairs within Proctor Street and Magazine Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you very much. On to public hearing number three on a petition by Extinet Systems Incorporated for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in East Boston. Marion Street between Trenton Street and White Street, Meridian Street between White Street and Condor Street, Trenton Street northeast of Marion Street, White Street between Marion Street and Meridian Street. This was new business on December 1st, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, Rent and Location Plan, Trenton Street, Marion Street, White Street, Meridian Street, East Boston, 11 sheets dated August 2022. The proponents please introduce themselves and their affiliations, uh, give us a brief uh, reintroduction to what is being proposed here and any changes since your last hearing. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. Uh, good morning. My name is Keenan Brin. I'm here on behalf of uh, Extinet Systems. Uh, I'm also joined by Han from NBNC Engineering, who prepared the plan. Uh, we were here a couple of weeks ago with this same uh, design. This is a uh, proposed 1,766-foot fiber run uh, in the public roadway that will be encased in four, uh, four PVC. Uh, the run it actually starts on Trenton. <coughs> and then heads north onto Marion. And this is accounts for approximately half the run. Uh, there is a spur right off of this for a, a, a very short uh, length. Uh, it then turns west onto a white uh, street for a short piece, and then heads north on Meridian for the, uh, essentially the other half of the run. Uh, again, this will be a four inch PVC conduit with the city shadow duct the run's about uh, 1,766 linear feet. And I don't recall any questions um, at the last meeting, but certainly I'd be happy to entertain any comments the, the commissioners may have now. Commissioners? PIC staff or members of the public? All set. All right, do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number three? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Exidet Systems, Inc. for a grant of location within Marion Street, Meridian Street, Trenton Street, and White Street. Is ready to the record by the chair? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Radio poser of state. Thank so moved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. On to public hearing number four <clears throat> on a petition by National Grid for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps. Huntington Avenue on its northwesterly side between Blagden Street and Dartmouth Street, Blagden Street at Huntington Avenue. This was new business on December 1st, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, Blagden Street and Huntington Avenue, Boston, two sheets dated October 6, 2022. Opponents, please introduce themselves and their affiliations and give a brief uh, overview of what's proposed and any changes since your last year. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the uh, Commission staff, Peter Nagel from National Grid. Today I'm joined by Samu Ifo, who is National Grid Engineering, and our uh, permit representative, Steve Damiano from Power Engineering. I'm gonna have uh, Mr. Ifo uh, describe the uh, slide deck, or the uh, plan deck, if you will, to show our proposed uh, sidewalk improvements on Blagden uh, Street and Huntington Avenue. Um, the cross hatch that you see in blue uh, represents a, uh, a curb realignment to uh, further define the entrance to Blagden Street. At that curb realignment, we will install a new crosswalk with applicable pedestrian ramps crossing over uh, Blagden Street entrance. We will again realign that new crosswalk that we placed to the uh, new uh, ramp there, as well as that uh, relay of the curb set. In addition, we will close off the existing uh, ramps and the old crosswalk on Blagden Street. This was in consultation with uh, PIC staff um, over the course of several meetings and such. The uh, ramps, of course, will be uh, ADA compliant and uh, I'll turn it to the commission for any questions. Do I hear any questions from members of the commission? I know, just to say thanks, right? Like this crossing has been kind of a nightmare um, for us. And so this is a, a really big improvement um, for what was kind of a, a terrible desire line. Um, and so uh, we appreciate that. Excellent. Uh, KC staff or members of the public? All set. All right. Do I hear a motion to approve public hearing number four? I'll make a motion to approve a petition by National Grid for the making of specific repairs within Huntington Ave and Blagden Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved, thank you very much. On to public hearing number five on a petition by National Grid for a grant of location to install a gas regulator station and associated infrastructure within the following public ways in Boston proper, Huntington Avenue generally between Blagden Street and Dartmouth Street, Dartmouth Street at Huntington Avenue. This was new business on December 1st as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plans. Huntington Avenue at Dartmouth Street, six inch regulator vault, Boston, five sheets dated June 20th, 2022. Would the petitioners please reintroduce themselves and provide a brief uh, overview of what is proposed and any changes since your last hearing. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, PIC Commission and staff, Peter Nagel from National Grid. Today I'm joined by Sam Waifo, National Grid Engineering as well as Steve Damiano from Power Engineering, who is our permit representative. 
Uh, there have been no changes since the uh, December 1st uh, he uh, new business hearing. What you have before you today, uh, Commission members, is a uh, request from National Grid to install a uh, two volt regulator station on Huntington Avenue at the corner of Dartmouth Street, uh, basically adjacent to the uh, or alongside the existing Western Hotel, the uh, brick front property there. Uh, with inlet piping and outlet piping, the 12-inch um, inlet piping will run along the curb line uh, indicated by the cursor going across and tying into existing main on Dartmouth Street. The 16-inch outlet piping will come out on to Huntington Avenue and a after the entrance to the pipe, make a sharp left and tie in at two points uh, adjacent to uh, Blagden Street on the far side of the property, uh, of the uh, street layout, excuse me. The um, station itself would serve roughly uh, 5,100 customers. Again, no changes since the new business uh, hearing proposal that was uh, heard on December 1st. Thank you very much. Um, two uh, questions, although one of which I think is actually answered by your rendering here, but uh, first is just to confirm that you uh, have, are comfortable given the location of the uh, vault and the piping that this will not cause injury or damage to the street tree uh, that is most uh, approximate to the installation location? C correct. We'll be in the uh, curb line, uh, Mr. Chair, but we will also, if needed, uh, hand dig or anything along those lines if uh, the, the root structure uh, uh, encroaches that area. Excellent. And second is just to confirm that you will be restoring the brick sidewalks uh, in this area uh, that are uh, impacted by uh, any of the work that you're doing uh, and uh, ensuring that the, the character and uh, uh, unique uh, layout bond pattern there is preserved uh, at the conclusion of your work. Correct. And typically what we would do is uh, remove the bricks and uh, uh, obviously save them, but typically we number them or there's a pattern that they save them that uh, is able to get them restored upon completion. Um, as we, after the, uh, the project also will uh, entail the new, uh, ran, uh, the new doors that uh, are uh, pedestrian friendly and have been signed off uh, by appropriate agencies as well. Excellent. Thank you. Um, other members of the commission, questions or comments? PIC staff or members of the public? Sarah, you are okay with the cover? Because this is a high pedestrian corridor. I mean, it is the pitch point, and you're going to have this wall cover. It is a cover that is absolutely conforming to the best of the ADA standards, right? Yes. Um, so we've been using this cover with our, our with National Grid for several other projects um, in the city, um, and so far we haven't um, received any ne negative feedback um, from our agency. Um, we continue to work with National Grid um, to um, ensure that the best pedestrian. Um, treatment for the covers um, is provided. And Paro, that All was right. a, uh, Mr. Dressing, that was part of a um, uh, pilot program that uh, we had with um, Sarah's uh, department several years ago that we've continued to uh, um, utilize in uh, subsequent installations and uh, has really um, a, been well received and probably should no longer be called a pilot as Sarah and I have kind of discussed offline that it uh, pretty much is the uh, commonplace now. Peter, thank you so much. 
truly appreciate it. Uh, any other comments, commissioners, KC staff, public? I think we're good. All right. Bring your motion to approve public hearing number five. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by National Grid for a grant of location in Huntington Ave and Dartmouth Street is read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time, members. So that concludes our agenda uh, for uh, the final KIC hearing of uh, 2022. Um, we, uh, in keeping with our standard practices, have no new business um, so that we start the new year fresh. Uh, so uh, certainly uh, gives us a bit of time back in our schedules today. And um, we uh, will be having our next hearing on January 12th. Uh, so we'll see folks then. And I uh, hope that everybody has a good holiday season uh, in between now and then. Uh, and with that, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you all very much. Take care. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you.